Hello, hello, Jeff Elvin here with Balin Brands. And today I wanna to show you how to use pipeline stages in the Keep Max Classic platform, formerly known as Infusionsoft. So pipeline stages is actually a really cool feature. Um, it, it focuses on opportunities and basically it's kind of a, a way to manage, let's say uh, a sales process or even a fulfillment process if you wanna use it that way. Uh, so I wanna show you a little bit about what you can do in opportunity stages. So the first thing is, is it's uh, under the CRM features and there's a thing for opportunities, but that would just show you opportunities that are open, not the configuration for it. So I'm going to go down here to CRM settings and you're going to see over here under sales settings, opportunity defaults, sales pipeline and pipeline automation. So I'm going to show you a little bit about each of those. Now the opportunity defaults lets you choose which sales stage is the first one to default. Um, you know, what is the win and loss stages? Cause you get to kind of track that as well. And there's some reporting based on, uh, wins and losses as far as uh, the sales pipeline and are we requiring a win reason? What loss stages are there? So a lot of different opportunities or, um, adjustments here. I don't recommend going in and trying to over configure these things if you haven't used it before, because you want to first kind of see how you use it and then put in some of the uh, additional controls as you get a little more dialed in with it. So the next thing is, is over here on sales pipeline, that's the actual pipeline. Those are the actual stages that we're um, creating in order to track our progress. Now, in this particular case, we've got a couple samples here. So these are ones that I've already set up. So this stage, each of these is a stage that's already been set up. And you have the option here, you'll see what we've already put in. So this would be like for uh, buyers and sellers, like in a real estate process, okay? so. First, we have a new opportunity. Then once we've reached out to them, maybe they didn't respond, so we're waiting for them to respond. We wanna move them from new opportunity to pending response. Uh, if we get, a, get an appointment set, that's our goal, so that's the next stage we wanna do. Then we wanna actually hold the appointment. Then we determine whether or not they're, you know, kind of what qualification they are as a buyer, A, B, C, D buyer. Um, then ultimately we wanna get them into escrow, and there you go, eventually they become a past client, they close, right? So once they're in escrow and they close on a property, now they're just a, the, a closed one. So they're done. We don't need to have any other stages in there. And then same with seller, new opportunity, pending response, appointment set, appointment complete. And then of course we do this a little different where it's a short term or long term potential seller. And then what status? Are they coming soon? Then they're active on the market. Did we make an adjustment under contract? And then R1 and lost. So you'll see these different options here are pretty, you know, you can get as detailed as you want. You can have just three if you want, right? Like new lead, active lead, working with lead or whatever, and then closed. I mean, it doesn't have to be super sophisticated. Um, but what you do is you have kind of this target number of days. That's another option. So again, this kind of helps your overall um, tracking of it. So you can say, well, if they're, a, you know, once the appointment's complete, then within a few days of that appointment, we want to know what stage they're in or something like that. Um, in this case, you also have the ability to put in a probability. So um, if you know your numbers, like if you've been doing this in the past, like, okay, if every 10 people I talk to, two of them become a closed deal. Well, there's usually that filters down. Okay. 10 I talk to, five I have an appointment with, and 2.5 of those, you know, half of them turn into deals. So each one of those stages would be a probability, right? So of 10, then my probability is 50 to get to the next stage of an appointment. And then of the 50%, maybe that's a hundred percent probability that they'll become a lead. I mean, you know, whatever your numbers are, right? That's, you put that in there. And then here you choose the order in which they show up in that particular list. Now there's also ways to do checklists. Um, and again, there's some other, it's not quite like a Trello board or something like that checklist, but it does give some options that you're supposed to complete these before it can move to the next stage. Um, so you can play with that as well. Again, a little more sophisticated. Uh, I don't recommend you try to get into those details unless you really have a need or kind of find where that's necessary. All right, so then you have that sales pipeline. And then there's also pipeline automation, which is super cool. And the pipeline automation, you're able to choose like, okay, when moving from one stage to another, then do this, right? So I can apply, remove a tag and start campaigns. I can add a note saying they move from this to that. Uh, a lot of really cool features there. Um, you can also do this actually in campaigns themselves. So if I can go into marketing campaigns, I can actually choose options where once they move from this stage, then these follow-up things happen. So that's also a really cool feature 
that's built right into Keep Max Classic as well. All right. So now once I have the opportunities, I can go to contacts. Now I have this my day section and we've got, you know, any appointments that are set, any general tasks that I might have. And then you also have these opportunities. So if you do have open opportunities, they show up when they're supposed to show up on the particular, like on your my day. So I can click on Tom Smith, for example, and I have this, okay, he's currently in the A buyer stage. Now it's having this move by, of course, this is a, a sandbox demo app. So this data is a little old here. But we have this move by. So it, again, that's based on this should be moved within, you know, 45 days if they're really an A buyer, right? They should be under contract by that point. So that's what that's for. And then this is the actual note. Now, what's really cool about this is that I can click on this edit and I can make my details. So the title is Tom Smith. We're just using his name. We could, we could call it buyer if you want, um, but we like to be able to see who it is pretty easily here. Um, who the contact is, who it's assigned to, in this case, of course, Tom Smith, and then what stage they're in. So if we did move him to in escrow, I change it to in escrow, and then I put my notes. Um, got Tom under contract, um, you know, work through contract to close stages, something like that. And then what's my next action? So now I actually can give myself the next thing to do. What do I want to show up on my calendar, my my day? next regarding Tom Smith. So now that I got him under contract, maybe we, you know, send over disclosures to have signed as an example. Okay. Great. So now when is that due? So we're going to say that's due. Let me get, go ahead and update this here to more current where we're at. All right. So we're going to say that that is now due tomorrow. All right. So I save that. So when I save that, it disappeared from my opportunities today because it's no longer past due or, or due today. And tomorrow it's going to show back up on my list as in that stage, the in escrow and so forth. So really cool way to, to easily manage. I can also see any of the previous changes. So you see here moved into a buyer stage like that was because this particular Tom Jones, not Tom Smith. Right. When I when I added him, then these are my notes. So anything that I do in this edit screen edit all these and hit save, then it shows up here in the actual notes and tracks all of that history. So super cool there. And finally, I'm actually able on my dashboard to have a pipeline stages widget. So you'll see I have two A buyers right now. Um, actually, let me reload that because I just moved one. There we go. I got one A buyer and one in escrow, right? Super cool. Just a way to, like I said, track all that, see all your different stages and so forth. So if you have any questions on that, by all means, you can reach out to us at team at